As you can see, we've sanded the cabinet. We've taken the doors and drawers out, sanded those. We've cleaned up everything. I like to wipe everything down with a rag and some mineral spirits to make sure I get all the dust and debris off of the surface. Uh, we chose in this application to go ahead and, uh, and paint the inside of the cabinet sort of a beige color. Uh, the outside of the cabinet is going to be a uh, flat black finish. And uh, because the, uh, the wood was in such good condition, we went ahead and just simply used spray paint right out of a spray can. You can do that. It's not necessarily the, the best application. Uh, the HVLP sprayer is much better. It's much more economical too because can spray paint is more expensive than buying a quart or a gallon of regular paint. Um, but we didn't need a whole lot and it just seemed like a much easier process and it'll probably be something easier for you to do at home also. You can see where I've taped off around the cabinet so that none of my overspray from my paint spray goes on the walls or the floor or the uh, countertop. So now I'm going to tape off some of the areas inside of the cabinet so that I don't get any paint on those. And we'll start painting our black. As you can see, we've, we've taped off on the inside of our cabinet. You'll notice the blue tape through here. We, we put that down because we don't want to get any overspray on the, on the beige uh, paint. But we do want the very edge, three quarter inch or so on the inside of the cabinet door to be black. So we've taped that off so we can get that part black. I just want to point out, I'm using, I don't know if you can see it in here, but this is uh, Scotch 3M brand blue painter's tape. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it. There's nothing worse when you're doing a painting project and you need to use some tape to tape something off. And then when you go to remove the tape, you just pull off all the paint you just put on. Um, that very rarely ever happens with the Scotch brand tape. So I, I think it's well worth the extra money uh, and it'll save you a lot of headaches and grief later. I've started painting this with the black. This is uh, Rust-Oleum brand, flat black. Uh, you'll notice here it, it's enamel paint. You always want to use enamel on cabinetry or furniture. It's much harder than a, uh, a latex paint. So any good quality enamel paint will work fine. Again, I like the Rust-Oleum brand. And for our clear protective finish after we're done, I'm going to use this here. This is uh, Zar Ultra. It's an interior spray fast drying polyurethane. The reason I use this brand here is you'll notice right here that it says, you know, it's clear antique flat. This right here gives you that very nice looking matte finish when it's applied. Uh, it's the only brand I've seen that you can just get off of the shelves that comes in a flat finish. Uh, you can commonly buy just about anywhere semi-gloss or satin or even gloss. I like the matte finish most of the time and that's why I use this uh, clear antique flat. I buy this at Ace Hardware stores. Uh, you'll just have to check your local area to see who's got this. Uh, if you can't find it in a, in a store, you can probably find it or a similar product online. Uh, I've always been very happy with the results from using this. I've started painting here and I've barely got most of it even covered. Uh, one of the mistakes people tend to make when they're spray painting is that they, you know, they've got to get a, a, a full solid coat of paint on the entire surface and that's what usually causes the runs. Um, the last thing we want to do after spending all the time sanding this down and prepping it is to spray too much paint at one time and have the paint running down the face of the cabinet. So realize that you're going to have to put three, four coats of paint on and don't even try to completely cover the surface. Just 
get a good amount of paint on it. See how I'm doing this here? Across this bottom edge, I'm gonna try and hold my can out in the way a little bit so that I don't get any on my beige paint inside the cabinet. And again, I'm barely, barely covering. This way I ensure that I'm not getting too much paint on at any one time. I'm going to have to put several coats of paint on there. So I might as well take my time, do it right. That's about all you need for a first coat of paint. Then my second coat of paint will fill it in a little more and I may do three or perhaps even four. It doesn't take that long to do this part. So take your time, light thin coats of paint, several of them, and then we'll apply some urethane when we're finished. We're back and as you can tell from the picture we've gotten our cabinet finished and reassembled. We've applied a couple of coats of the flat black paint, a couple of coats of the antique flat uh, spray lacquer, as well as we've replaced all of the hardware on the doors and drawers, new hinges and knobs. Total time in this project I would say is something under eight hours. However, I will mention that it's eight hours over the course of two or three days. Uh, it's the perfect project to do over a weekend because you've got to have a place like your garage or basement to lay out the door fronts and the drawers, spray them and let them dry and spray them and let them dry. Uh, so it would take you a, a weekend, but uh, only a few hours here and there. Uh, you may be able to see some other aspects of the bathroom starting to come together. I'm going to pan up a little bit. We've chosen a nice light gray color for the walls. That'll tie in nicely to the yellow tile and the uh, black uh, vanity cabinet. Um, as far as cost of materials for this vanity, hardly nothing. I would say probably $30 or $40. The knobs weren't that expensive. These are just brushed nickel hinges and knobs. Uh, you could spend more, certainly, if you wanted to. But for $30 or $40 in a weekend, it's an incredible amount of money. And, and not to mention the money, but the effort saved in replacing this. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but the vanity top is um, mounted into the tile on the wall. So it would have been a nightmare to remove this and replace it, even if you found a piece exactly the same size. So overall, this was a huge cost savings, and I think we've got a pretty good result. I'm very pleased with the way the cabinet came out. Keep in mind, you could do this kind of thing to an entire kitchen as well, uh, although it's much more extensive and much more time-consuming with uh, all the cabinet doors and drawers in an entire kitchen. I want to pan up here a little bit to show you this uh, the sink top. This was a cultured marble sink top, and I don't know how well you can tell in the picture here, but uh, before it had some rust stains and scratches and stain marks all throughout the cabin or the countertop here. And basically, what we did was we just took a very fine 220 grit sandpaper and gave it a light sanding. We used a little water along with that sanded out the rust stains and all of the scratches and and frankly sanded it has a real nice looking matte finish now which i think is even more preferable uh today than a glossy finish especially when it was glossy and all scratched up so overall i'm very pleased with how this came out so i'd like to ask you to please stay tuned for future video blogs and if you have any suggestions on what you might like to hear about, you can always comment on our blog about this video or something you'd like to see in the future. So thanks and keep an eye out. We'll be back.